Oh my god, have you seen this on the Discord? No. That's definitely going to end up in my Discord cache. But how am I going to get rid of it? Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so today's video we're going to take a look at how to delete your Discord cache, which some of you may or may not know actually exists. So if you're using Discord on a PC or you've got it installed somewhere, the program itself actually has its own cache folder to speed up loading times and all that kind of stuff. Now, it mostly caches things like JPEGs, PNGs, MPEGs, all that kind of stuff. Mostly picture stuff. There are some data there as well, but mostly picture stuff. So if you have in some time actually gone to a Discord server and viewed a picture, it may not be your picture, it may not be one that you've posted yourself, just you've scrolled down through and there's a picture there, chances are that that image has been cached onto your computer, onto its hard drive or SSD, which in some cases can probably be a bad thing. Um, obviously, some Discord servers are a little bit more open than others and you can get all sorts of things posted on there, things which may be uh, inflammatory, racist, sexist, whatever it may be. Generally, you probably don't want it on your computer. So how do you get rid of it? Well, there's a few different ways of getting rid of it. You can do it manually, you can choose a program to do it, and also you can use a little bit of a user intervention as well. So let's go to the computer and I'll show you some of the options and give you some tips. Okay, so this is a, uh, a typical Discord server. Well, it's not a typical one, it's actually mine. It's the Mike's Unboxing Q&A server. And this particular page here is where we have the new video releases listed. So every time a new video is released, then there is a JPEG which is shown here and the links to it, etc. So all of this imagery is gonna be cached into the Discord server app or the program. So let's go into the computer and I'll show you whereabouts they are located so you can manually delete them yourself. So if you open up my computer on your C drive, go into users and your user profile, and then go into app data. Now, if you can't see app data, you may have to go up to the top, click on view and choose show hidden items to be able to see this. So uh, you may need to do that first of all. Uh, next of all, you wanna go into roaming and then into Discord, and then into Cache. So in here is all the programs in, they're in the file file types that are not actually allocated to anything. So they are essentially in a kind of uh, encrypted format. So you can't see them obviously how they are. They don't appear as images in Windows Explorer and all that kind of stuff. So how do you see the images and how do you know what is actually on your computer? So let's minimize some of these windows and we'll go to a website here, which is cashmonkey.app. Now this is a uh, pretty awesome little app, which basically speeds up the process of finding, clearing and browsing your cached images and files. So let's go ahead and now we'll download it for the Windows version. There is obviously, as it says there, is a Mac version as well. So if that is your preference, then you can go ahead and download that. But we're gonna save this to the desktop. And as you can see, I have actually had down, downloaded this previously and used it previously, but unfortunately I didn't plug my microphone in, so we're doing it again for a second time. So hopefully this should be a more polished preview or video or whatever. But anyway, this is downloading, so it'll take a few seconds. Now if we minimize that and we'll go to the desktop and wait eagerly for our unconfirmed download to finish downloading anytime today. Thank you, Virgin Media. Okay, so there we are. There's our Cash Monkey EXE. So we can double click on that to start it running and it will start the installation. And this is actually a, a pretty lightweight program. It's about 110 megabytes, so it's not very big at all. And this is how it opens up. Now, if you've opened this program before, bizarrely, it actually has its own cache of sorts. So anything you've scanned previously will actually be in your first page, which is kind of ironic if you think about it. But anyway, let's go through some of the settings. So this is the home screen, obviously. If you click on this one, the settings cog, this is your directories and your applications. So you can actually add additional cache directories. So if you want to do Google Chrome or whatever, then you can do, uh, there's Slack as well. And basically you can choose your own cache directories to be added to this list. So you can go ahead and use this application for other applications and clean up the whole lot in one fell swoop. Uh, also, there's an option to save pictures. So whilst you're viewing or browsing your cache history, 
If there's an image you actually want to keep, then you can click on a button and it will send it to the location which is stated here. Now you can click on choose and choose a different location, so whether it's a, a flash drive or removable storage, you can go ahead and do that if you wish. Uh, also there's a couple of themes, so there's a light, light theme, dark theme, all that kind of stuff, but we won't get too heavily involved in that at the moment. But essentially what happens with the dump directory is it'll move everything from your existing cache in Discord to a private cache monkey dump. So it'll take it all from one, put it in another, so then you can browse and go through and do what you want with it. Uh, for me, personally, that's a little bit pointless, so uh, we'll go straight into it. But anyway, Cache Monkey, if you click on that, it's about it, and gives you all the information about Jamie Pine, who is actually the creator of this. So if you want to go and do donate some money to him or watch him on Twitch TV, you can go ahead and do that from there. Or if you want to get help on this application, then you can click on that and it'll be done via the uh, Twitter platform. So let's go back to the home page, and this is Cache Monkey. So if we do scan cache first of all, and these are all our cached files now which have been in the Discord, so anything which has been posted on your Discord will appear in these particular areas, so whether it's conversations, all that kind of stuff. So as you can see, most of these here are the uh, videos which we just had a quick scan through in the Mike's Unboxing Video Releases section, and there's going to be other things in there, things that have been sent to each other. Uh, that one there I saw earlier, I remember seeing that. But yeah, you get the general idea. So that is all of your cache. You can actually, if you wanted to, you can narrow it down. So if there is a particular type of uh, file or image or whatever you're looking for, you can go ahead on the file types discovered and choose PNGs, JPEGs, MP4s to narrow down your search if there's a lot of them. So options, you've got purge dump. So that will purge the cache monkey dump directory. This is actually in your My Computer section or wherever you've located it. Purge cache. We'll cache every directory which is listed as we went through in settings, so the actual Discord one will be purged and it will be put into the purge dump. And this one at the bottom, the big red button, is purging the cache and the dump. So essentially this is doing all of them at once. Now in order to do this properly you do need to close down Discord, so we're going to go in now and right click and choose quit Discord. And then we're going to click on purge cache and dump. And everything's gone, so if we do scan cache now, there's nothing there at all. So this gets rid of all the cache which is there. Now, when you do open uh, Discord back up, which we'll quickly do now, we go back into this directory as well. You can see now, because it's opening up, it's actually caching a lot of the files that it needs to actually run the application. And as soon as you go into a particular room or a um, channel which has got an image, then that will be cached. So if for some reason there's an image which is coming up in here or in your uh, cache monkey uh, cache here, if there's an image which will not go away, essentially what you're going to need to do is go back into the Discord, find the channel which you're um, actually in, which has got this image cached, and basically you'll have to leave that channel in order for it to leave your cache altogether. Or if it's in a message with someone, say for instance you've done a direct message and the image happens to be in that, you'll need to delete the entirety of that message to remove that image from the cache. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense for you. Okay, so there you go. There is a reasonably simple way of removing items from your Discord cache on your computer. Now obviously this makes a great deal of sense if someone's sent you a file or shown you a file or has actually posted on a Discord server a sensitive nature file, uh, whether it be sexism, racism, whatever it may be, if it's something that you don't like or you don't think should be on your computer, then obviously this is a great way of removing it. Like I said, if you do need to remove an image which keeps on reoccurring, you may have to leave the group or channel that you're actually a uh, part of to get rid of that entirely. But again, there's not really a great deal you can do about that. There isn't a way to fully delete images in their entirety if you're a part of that group. So do bear that in mind. Uh, if you've got any comments or questions, feel free to stick them in the comments section below. And if you found this type of content useful, click on the like button and don't forget to click on subscribe and the chime notification to get more notifications of videos of this type of content when it's released. So I've been Mike. This has been the Discord Cash Monkey and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching. So let's go to the computer and I'll show you some of the options and give you some tips.
First tip, make sure you've got your mic plugged in. <laughs> Second tip, make sure your mic batteries are inserted correctly. <laughs>